A company produces bias coins that come up heads when flipped with probability 0.7. You are not sure whether you have one of these bias coins or whether you have a fair coin, so you devise the following experiment. Step 1. Flip the coin 100 times. Step 2. If there are 62 or more heads, then conclude that the coin is biased, otherwise conclude that the coin is fair. This is a foreshadowing, this particular example, of something that is known in statistics as hypothesis testing. So you will see various elements of hypothesis testing in this particular example. Here is a 2x2 two two matrix and on the columns here we have the true coin status. So if the coin is fair, for example, then there's two conclusions from our test that we run here and that is one conclusion is the coin is fair. Now if you draw that conclusion you've done the right thing so I'll put a check there. On the other hand if the coin is fair and you can conclude that the coin is biased you've made a mistake. So I'll put an X in that box. Likewise what if you've been given one of these biased coins that comes up heads with probability 0.7 if you conclude that such a coin is fair you've made a mistake. So I'll put an X in that box. And finally, if it is a bias coin and you conclude that it is a bias coin, you have done the right thing and that gets a check. So in these two cases, you've done the right thing. And in these two cases, you've made a mistake. Now in hypothesis testing, we call one of these, namely this one right here, a type one error. And this one right here, we call a type 2 error. And we're interested in the probability of being in each of these four boxes here. So if you just take this particular 2 by 2 matrix and draw it forward, here are the mathematical expressions for those probabilities. There are two different probabilities model, models going on here and the first is associated with a fair coin. When you have a fair coin then X, which is the number of heads that occur in a hundred flips of the coin. That has the binomial distribution with an n equals 100 and a p of 0.5 and that by the way corresponds to this particular column. Notice that we have 0.5s everywhere. Second of uh, probability model that's out there is when you are given a bias coin. In that case x has the binomial distribution with n equals 100 and p equals 0.7. That corresponds to the second column and notice you have 0.7s and 0.3s in that particular case. Now the way the experiment was run, the conclusion was that you had a bias coin if there were 62 or more heads that came up. So notice the conclusion that the coin is biased corresponds to 62 or more. So notice both of these summations run from 62 to 100 and those are the associated probabilities here. The probability of your concluding that the coin is fair will go from 0 to 61 because that's 61 or fewer heads and so both of these summations run from 0 to 61. So there are the probabilities, but of course those are a big pain to calculate. So on the next page, there are solutions for these four probabilities, both done in R and done in Apple. So in R, you use the p-binomial function, and here is the p-binome when there are 61 or fewer in both of these cases. And for the fair coin, you have a probability of 0.5. For the bias coin you have a probability of 0.7. And then when we want the probability of 62 or more heads, that's 1 minus the probability of 61 or fewer. And so you get 1 minus p binome in both of these cases. In the um, first column you have a fair coin, so 0.5 is a probability and 0.7 is a probability over here. Now the way this is done in Apple is you set x to a binomial random variable with 101 half. That is the case where you have a fair coin. Then you set a, a random variable y to a binomial random variable with n equals 100 and p equals 7 tenths. 
and then you simply call the CDF function. And notice in the Faircoin we use X, which is the model with a, a P value of one half. And in the second column we use Y, which is the uh, binomial model with a, a seven tenths. And here is the probability of 61 or fewer. And here is the probability of 62 or more. Either using R or using Apple, you get the very same numbers and those appear on the next slide. Notice that the column sums are both one in this case. Here is if you have a fair coin the probability you will decide it's fair is 0.9895. That's good. That's a high probability. On the other hand if you have a biased coin the probability you determine it will be biased is again high and that's pretty good. But there are two errors here and notice those two errors in hypothesis testing are a type 1 error and uh, the probability of a type 1 error is 0 0.0105 and the probability of a type 2 error is 0 0.0340. Now since it is possible that you've seen a little bit of hypothesis testing I'll go ahead and write down H0 which is known as the null hypothesis and usually we assume the best here assume that the coin is fair for the null hypothesis then what's known as the alternative hypothesis which is H1 sometimes known as HA is that the coin is biased its probability of heads comes up as a 0.7 usually we don't use these words here we write this as H0 is that P is equal to one half and H1 the alternative hypothesis is that the probability of tossing a heads is seven tenths. Now these two probabilities here I'll go ahead and write those using a statistical jargon alpha is the probability of type 1 error and that probability we have calculated here as 0 0.0105 and our what is known as beta is the probability of type 2 error and in this particular case we calculated that as 0 0.0340. So even though we won't be doing any hypothesis testing in this class, that's uh, saved for the class that follows this one. A lot of the thinking and probability in the binomial distribution can be used in hypothesis testing. The last note here is there's no foolproof test here. You could mess up in one way or the other and that's typically the way that it goes in hypothesis testing.